Hi guys, it's Tamara back with another video today. We're going to start our Monday off by talking about how to manage a family crisis. What do you do if, let's say, you are getting ready for Thanksgiving, you're getting ready for Christmas, and there's a family trauma, right? Someone starts arguing, someone starts nitpicking, somebody starts, you know, screaming and crying and saying that they need help. What if you have to take somebody to the hospital for a psychiatric crisis? So that's what we're gonna talk about today in today's video. But first, let me just get a few things out of the way. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Uh, for those of you who are already subscribed, thank you so much for being with me. Um, I enjoy your comments and your suggestions and your engagement. Um, it really does make this channel a whole lot better. Um, and it also provides an educational platform for, for everybody because the questions you ask and the videos that you ask me to do really does empower and enlighten others. So um, thank you for that. I also encourage you to check out the new webinar that I'm going to be doing on the 28th, I believe it is. It's Wednesday. It's the eight signs or red flags of intergenerational trauma. I'm going to post that webinar right down in the uh, description box so that you can register for free and tune in with me. So let's go ahead and just get started. The benefits for you today in this video is that we're going to talk about my top three suggestions for dealing with a family crisis, especially around the holiday time because families coming together uh, really can create a big crisis and a big trap, uh, big trap, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and jump in, okay? So when you are dealing with a psychological crisis, an emotional crisis, let's even say a physical crisis, sometimes fights break out at family gatherings, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, at New Year's, people drink, uh, and some go a little bit way too far. Um, my <laughs> my experience with a lot of my clients is that one of the reasons they don't want to deal with family is because they drink or they get high. And when they go overboard because they don't have uh, the wherewithal or the awareness to stop or to sip, they just like do shots and they overdo it. Uh, they don't want to be bothered with that. That is like a ticket to a terrible holiday season when you just get so drunk and so high that you're not in your right, rightful frame. So I often encourage my clients to keep three things in mind for dealing with a crisis. One is psychological preparation, okay? What I mean by psychological preparation is weigh the pros and the cons of attending a, a holiday gathering, an event, with your family, weigh the pros and the cons. Also weigh the pros and the cons of skipping that family gathering or dinner. You wanna be able to look at what could happen, what's likely to happen, what's this person's pattern, what should I be ready to do? Should I be ready to get up and leave? Should I be ready to address them assertively, not passive aggressively or not aggressively, but assertively? Should I you know, totally leave the space should I um, tell them to knock it off or I'm out of here? What should I do? So prepare ahead of time. Look at the pros and the cons of not going. Look at the pros and the cons of going. Well, if I go, we might actually hit it off this time really well. Or if I go, maybe I'll be like a, a encourager or motivator not to drink so much, right? So weigh the pros and the cons. The other part of that is... Um, so weighing the pros and the cons, the other one is looking at what it's going to do to your own psychological health, okay? How are you going to deal with this? Are you going to be able to manage it and overlook it and walk away? Or are you going to need some coping skills because it's so emotionally and psychologically overwhelming? You can do all of this in a journal. Write it down, you know, do like a line down the middle of your page and put pros, cons, and just make a list of the pros and cons of um, spending the holiday season with a loved one. I'm sorry, guys. I keep looking at my hair because seriously, like if you have curly hair, like it, it's crazy. Side note. This is a side note. If you have, if you have curly hair, it's crazy, right? Because it's like, you know, you're just busy talking and going on with your daily life. And there's like a curl over here, just bouncing around all out of line and tune. So I'm sorry. I get distracted easy. So I apologize. Um, so let's go to the next one. Okay. Emotional preparation is the next one. That's another suggestion that I make to my clients. Emotional preparation is being able to tune into yourself and ask yourself, how am I managing this? Right? What am I feeling right now being in the presence of this person, being in the presence of this family member? Am I feeling ashamed? 
Am I feeling unwanted and unloved? Am I feeling like they are interrogating my space? What's going on here? You want to be able to tune into yourself, right? Intuition is what you are really shooting for. That's what I mean by emotional preparation. Being able to identify what you're feeling. Just the thought of attending a family gathering for Thanksgiving or Christmas might trigger some emotional issues, may trigger some foundational and deep-rooted trauma. So just being able to emotionally prepare right? This is my second tip, emotional preparation. You want to be able to emotionally prepare for what's going on, what's going on inside of you, and how do I need to manage this? Do I need to walk away? Do I need to use coping skills? Do I need to call somebody? Do I need to leave? So, so just being ready emotionally. You know, I've heard some people say um, throughout my career, um, and primarily clients and even people in my own family, they would say things like, I really do avoid being happy because if I'm happy, I'm likely to be disappointed. So why not just stay depressed, right? So emotional preparation is being able to look at yourself on the inside and say, okay, what's going on? Am I setting myself up for failure? Am I creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? A self-fulfilling prophecy. Am I saying that I'm going to fail at this? Am I saying that it's going to be terrible? Am I saying that I don't have the emotional stamina to deal with this person, right? So that's what I mean by emotional preparation. Number three, okay? Uh, we have psychological, we have emotional and physical. And what I mean by physical is your physical space around you, right? Do you need to sit away from that person? Do you not need to be in the same room with that person? Do you need to avoid them at the social gathering? Do you need to get up and leave when they come to sit down and start asking you a bunch of interrogative questions, right? Do you need to put a hedge around you psychologically and literally physically uh, to keep that person from invading your space? What do you need to do? Do you need to avoid eye contact? Do you need to give them your, your you know, undivided attention? Do you need to constantly watch them and see what they're doing and what they're up to? So physical preparation is knowing what to do in your, in your environment. Right. When I am doing conferences or I'm doing speaking e uh, events, whether that's nationally or internationally, I've kind of I've designed this technique for my mind to kind of change my thinking about it. And so what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll say, OK, what's the psychological barriers I'm likely to face? Well, I'm a woman of color. I'm multi-ethnic. Um, I'm a female in a male dominated field. Uh, you know, I'm in the field of, of psychotherapy and psychiatry and psychology. And so I'm likely to meet up with some people who are very arrogant and far removed from reality, right? They're stuck in their labs and, and their research programs, and they're not really here mentally and, and emotionally to, to engage and connect with me. What are the emotional barriers I'm likely to face? Well, my own feelings of, of low self-efficacy, um, can I really handle a room full of 200 people? Um, you know, now, am I going to fumble the words? Am I going to not do very well? Am I going to be anxious, right? Am I going to get one of those terrible migraines that like destroys my, my ability to function? So emotional preparation. And then I look at physical preparation. Um, you know, do I need to make sure that not everybody comes up to me and wants to talk to me? Do I need to make sure that my body language says I'm open to talk to you, but then I I can't let you in too far. So so that's kind of like an example of how to go through this, okay? Psychological, emotional, and physical preparation. It's powerful. Thanks so much, guys, for being with me in this video today. I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can stick around for more videos that I'm going to be posting. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. Hang in there. You can actually come back to this video and comment in the comment box how things went for you this Thanksgiving. And if you used any of these tips, I'm open to hear them and I'm sure everybody is as well. All right, guys, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye.